Hey everybody, Professor Smith here. I want to start this week's video, well, the first video of this week, um, generally discussing thesis statements, why they're important, what they are, and the beginning stages of creating them. I'm going to be showing some information, as you can see, I guess, from what I already have up. Uh, I will have more information this week, and our journal entry this week, um, which will be posted on Thursday, will also have further information. So today is more of a general overview to get us comfortable with some ideas and some concepts before we then dive into a little bit more specifics and actually look at some examples um, and figure out what we can do to get the best, well not get, but create the best thesis statement that we can. So what is a thesis statement? Um, if you've gone through English 111, which I would assume you have, um, most of you probably heard that term before. Some of you even through high school might have heard the term thesis statement. Um, I use the term, but I'm not the biggest fan of calling it that. Um, in the sake of doing an argumentative research paper, I don't really like to call it a thesis statement. I like to call it a thesis answer. Why? Well, because your thesis statement is answering your question. So for me, when I call it a thesis answer, it really reminds me that whatever that statement is, it has to be able to fully answer my question. So thesis statement, thesis answer. In other words, a thesis statement is the answer that you've posed for yourself for your project. If I were to ask the question, is jumping a good form of exercise? My thesis would answer that. It would probably say, Jumping is a great form of exercise because it engages the whole body, it's fun, and it makes you look cool while doing it. And of course, you can have a different answer, but it's still a direct answer to the question. It's a direct answer with the exact evidence, examples, supporting evidence that I'm going to use. I cannot stress this enough. I also like to tell my students... Um, Remember high school. Remember when you had a test and your professor or your teacher said to you, please answer the questions in the form of a question, uh, in the form of an answer, form of a question, excuse me, right? So you would take the question and then you would answer that question using the language from the answer. So if I asked the question, is jumping cool? My answer would have language from said question. Yes, jumping is cool. Or jumping is cool because I haven't spoken about this yet but I think this is a good point to bring it up your your research question typically does not ever show itself in your paper some of you may have your title of your paper as your research question and it's not bad, it's okay, but it's, it's definitely not the best. Um, most of my papers um, still that I write now, or papers that I wrote while I was in grad school or in undergrad school, uh, in undergraduate school, um, typically were not just my research questions. So then where do your research questions go in the paper? Um, nowhere, as I said. What I'm looking for as a reader, as an academic, as a professor, so I'm looking at that thesis statement. And just as I'm telling you to take your question, flip that language into an argumentative statement, into an answer, the reader, myself, is doing the same thing as I read that answer. If I read a thesis statement that says, jumping is cool because it's blank, blank, and blank, I'm going to safely assume that your question the question that you asked that led you through your research probably was something along the lines of is jumping a good activity or is jumping a good sport or is jumping good for for humans you know like maybe the exact wording is not there but the idea the concept of the question 
is still there. Of all the things in your paper, and I, I do not mean to diminish or take away from the importance of everything in your paper, that it all works together. But the most important thing is your thesis statement, your thesis answer, your answer to your question, by, by far. Um, maybe you'll find another source or another professor who disagrees, but it's part of an argument. Everybody gets to make one. I might not be right, but I think I'm right based off my experience as a writer, based on my experience as an educator, on my experience as a editor and tutor and reader of these papers. If you don't have a clear, a concise, a well thought out thesis, most of your other paper will suffer even if it's really well written and well researched. Why? For the simple reason that your thesis guides me. It guides your reader. Without your thesis, I'm left to wonder why you are writing about what you're writing about. What is the point of your paper? Why are you telling me the things that you are telling me? Your thesis statement tells me all of that. It lets me know all of that important information so that as I read all your support, your evidence, your counter arguments, your summaries, your quotes, all of it makes sense because I know why you are telling it to me. So what is a thesis? A thesis is an argumentative statement that addresses the question that you've posed to yourself for your paper or for your research. For some papers, you will have the question asked, uh, posed to you, like for your first paper, where I asked you, how did this particular fake news story affect culture, and what can we do to prevent it in the future? This blank fake news story did blank, and to prevent in the future, we should do blank and blank. Taking the question, answering the question with an argumentative statement that you're going to try and back up. So, how do you create a thesis? Well, one, I hope you read the stuff that I'm going to give you. I'm going to post the link. I'm going to give some other stuff that talks a little bit more in depth about how to create a thesis. But instead of reading this, because you can all do that, I want to talk about my own experience and how to create a thesis. Um, so how do you create a thesis? Um, like all good writing, it's done in steps, phases, however you want to put it, right? The first step is to write down your tentative, your working thesis statement. So think about it this way for a second. High school science fair or whatever, eighth grade science fair, right? Mm -hmm. What's the first step? Well, we come up with a research question. What's the second step? Hypothesis. We guess, based on the current knowledge that we have, we take a educated guess as to what we think the answer to this question is gonna be. You've done a bunch of work in order to get to your research question. In order to do that work, you had to have read you had to have listened. You had to have watched some stuff. You had to have generated ideas, ideas, excuse me, and gathered information. Which means that you probably learned some stuff. Which means that by the time you formulate that question, you should hopefully have some semblance of what you think the answer to your question is going to be. Whether it's because your feelings whether it's because your general ideas, um, but what you think you, the answer to your question is going to be, your hypothesis, your best educated guess. The next step of that science fair is we actually go out and do the research. We learn more information as much as we possibly can. We gather as much facts as we possibly can. And then we go back and we reevaluate our thesis statement. Excuse me, our hypothesis. 
this is how we do it. This is how we create a strong thesis statement. So that first step is, what is your general working thesis statement? What is your tentative thesis statement? What do you think the answer to your question is at this current state? You need to be able to come to this so that you can start to guide your writing. If you don't have an idea of what you're trying to argue, then your paper is going to be very informative in the sense that it's going to be like reading a newspaper article or a pamphlet or an encyclopedia entry where you'll be telling me facts and you'll be telling me statistics or telling me what's happening in the world, but you won't be making an argument. You're going to just kind of be like a reporter or writing a book report, not telling me any new ideas, not gathering information to and putting that information together to build new ideas and to reinforce old ideas. That argument, that thesis statement guides you through that paper, through your writing. So start your paper with a very bland, general thesis statement. And start it knowing very well that you might get two or three pages into this paper and very well realize that you were wrong. You need to go back and rewrite some of this because your thesis statement was wrong. You were incorrect. You were proven incorrect as you were doing the research. I know personally for me, that has happened many times where maybe two, three, four pages into a paper, I realized that I had wrote, I had wrote myself into a corner and that I genuinely didn't believe what I was saying anymore. And I had to go back and change my thesis statement and rewrite some of my ideas to make the paper make more sense for what I now believed. Start off by writing something down. Make sure that it is an argument. What is an argument? We discussed this a little bit, but an argument is something that you believe in, that not necessarily everybody else believes in, um, whether it is an argument based on facts that you've learned or whether it's an argument based on faith. It's something that you think is true, but somebody else might not necessarily agree with that point. It, it has to take a stance. Like A way to test an argument is to say, okay, if this is how I feel, can anybody feel something else on the other side? Like for instance, smoking is bad. Smoking cigarettes is bad for your lungs. Can you argue against that? No. Smoking is bad for you. Can you argue against that? Yeah. It tastes good. It makes me feel nice after. It relieves stress after a long day. Now, I, I don't smoke. I'm just saying this could be an argument for, uh, for smoking. So, it has to have that point. So, we create it by first writing it down then starting to do more research. So if we could break it up into steps, we could break it up into step one, write a general thesis statement down. Step two, do some more research. Step three, write down, uh, start writing your paper. Step four, go back to your thesis statement and ask, do I still agree with this statement? Can I make it more specific? Rewrite your thesis statement to make it more specific. Go back and do more research. Go back and do more writing. Go back and look at your thesis statement to revise it. So like, when I said the word working thesis, um, this is what I meant. So I don't want to read the whole thing, but in order to create this thesis statement, you have to work on it. If you come back and write a little bit each draft, do you come back and part of that drafting should be looking at your thesis. So I'm going to read for a second, right? Just, um, the thesis is the foundation of all research papers. The thesis establishes a paper's content, the argument or analysis being made, and serves to outline the progression and the, uh, the progression of discussion and support. Most beginning writers find it difficult to formulate a topic and supporting details into a final thesis statement to begin a paper. However, instead of trying to have your thesis set in stone from the beginning, Start with a thesis that is friendlier to adjustment as you consider the ideas you write about, um, consider the ideas you write about 
and what support you use. A working thesis. The only way you are ever going to get to a really strong, well thought out, concise thesis, um, there's two options, maybe three, but I'll do two. One, copy and paste it off the internet. I do not think that's a good option. I would highly, highly recommend it. The amount of trouble that you could get into on campus is um, astronomical. You could even be kicked out of school. So I would avoid that. So the only good way to go about doing it would be to actually go through these steps that I was kind of outlining. Think of a thesis, write, uh, think of a thesis, research, write, come back to your thesis. Read, write, come back to your thesis. Read, write, come back to your thesis. Develop it. Your thesis from the first draft of your paper should look a lot different by the time you hit that third or fourth draft, which is pretty much how many drafts you should be at if you're looking to write really, really good, good papers. So I'm going to download this, and I'm going to download this. Um, well, not this one because it's on a PDF, but um, I'm going to give this stuff to you. So... You'll be able to check that out with the video, um, with the information that I send there. So the one last thing that I want to talk about in terms of just a general eyes idea of thesis statements before we, before I create some more that are a bit more specific before we move into our journaling for the week um, is how do I know if my thesis is strong? So there's, there's a lot of examples here, but there's three that I, I want to focus on. Um, the first one would be states a clear point. Um, I feel like I've been saying this a little bit over the course of this video, but I need to be able to, in one sentence, see what your main point is. If your paper is asking about whether or not there should be smoking on the college campus, uh, the College of Staten Island, you need to state that clear point that yes, there should, but only in designated areas, or no, there shouldn't under no circumstances, but I need to be able to, by the time I finish that thesis statement, that sentence, I need to be able to know what point it is that you are making. Next, we need to navigate between too narrow and too broad. Too narrow, um, an example might be, I had a bad day yesterday. Well, I had a bad day yesterday because I didn't sleep well the night before and breakfast was bad and it's kind of threw me off all day. End of paper, nice and done. Too broad, on the other hand, would be everybody has bad days sometimes. All right, so... Two narrows, I had a bad day yesterday. There's not really a lot to talk about. Paper is going to be very boring or drawn out. But too broad would be everybody has bad days sometimes. Something that might be just right, we need to find that sort of Goldilocks syndrome. It's too hot, it's too cold, it's just right. It's too hard, it's too soft, it's just right. Um, so if... Everybody has a bad day sometimes is too broad, and I had a bad day yesterday is too narrow. We may consider every time I have a bad day, I learn something about myself. Well, now I'm going to be able to talk about several bad days I've had and some of the lessons that I've learned from those bad days rather than just talking very generally or very specifically in depth about one bad day. Again, how do we get to something in between too narrow and too broad? We work on it. Lastly, um, your thesis needs to be to the point. It's a thesis statement. Um, if you're looking at any of the documents and it says thesis statements, it's because it's referring to the thesis statements that all of us are doing. The thesis statements in general, the, the idea of thesis statements as, as, a, as a thing or as things. But for you, it's a thesis statement, which means that it needs to be one sentence. Now, if you were writing a 20-page paper, okay, maybe two. It'll change. If you're writing a 100-page paper, maybe even a whole paragraph or maybe more, 
but for a four to six page paper, for even an eight to 10 page paper, you should be able to get your statement, a statement of a clear point, that is not too narrow or too broad, to get that into one sentence. Now, I'm not saying your sentence has to be incredibly simple, like boy get, uh, the, boy got, uh, the boy got milk yesterday, you can have commas and you can have ands and you can have dashes and colons and you can make them compound and complex sentences, but it would still be a sentence. So with that, um, I, I hope that this general overview gives us a little bit of insight. Again, tomorrow's video is going to be more in depth. And then as we move into our journaling on Thursday, even more in depth than that but I wanted to be general because one it takes some time to talk about this stuff and I didn't want to <coughs> excuse me make an hour long video and two just like our thesis works in phases and our paper writing works in phases so does wrapping our head around what this is so I'm hoping that by the time you listen to this you're like okay I, I get I, I get I get what a thesis statement is it kind of makes sense and then tomorrow makes even more sense, and then so on and so forth. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this discussion, well, lecture, was um, interesting and that you learned something from it. I hope that the materials that I uh, send as well are helpful as well. Um, let's get on it, because this week's journal uh, is going to be all about our working thesis statement. Um, why that's the case, why it's our working thesis statement, um, what support at this moment we have to prove it, and, and things along those lines. But um, let's keep moving along because we're, we're moving along with these journals and we only have another th 20 plus days in which to finish this project. And it, it might seem like a lot at this point. Um, but that should only be the case if you're really on board with what we're doing and you are up to date with all your journals and actual legitimate work. So if you need me, email me. You know how to get in touch with me. I'm around. I'm here. Uh, we'll talk soon. Thanks, everybody.